Okay, everybody, let's talk a little bit about Chapter 1 in Dang Zinger book, um, Understanding the Political World. Um, let's talk a little bit about what uh, politics and knowledge are. So we're going to define politics. We're going to talk about, talk about three types of political knowledge. We're going to talk about strength and weaknesses of political knowledge, and we're going to apply techniques and whether or not political science is a science. So one of the first uh, things that are talked about in the, in the, the text is... Um, is it legal for, for school officials to search students' uh, possessions, lockers, backpacks, whatever? So go ahead and take a look at the first couple of pages of the book, and it gives you a real-life scenario that happens. And it's always interesting to see different types of reactions to whether or not, you know, if this was your little sister or your daughter, whether or not it, you would be angry if this happened to them. So um, one of the first journeys toward a better understanding of politics is trying to establish what we mean by politics. Politics is a competition among individuals and groups pursuing their own interests. And politics is also the exercise of power and influence to allocate things that are valued. Um, we'll get into the definition of power and influence in a little bit. But remember, politics is prevalent throughout our world, and there's really no way of escaping it. And politics, in addition to power, is to determine who gets what, when, and where. And how. Sorry, not where. What, when, and how. Uh, so, while that is a definition of politics, I also think it's a good definition of power. And power is also, you know, using your influence to get somebody to do something that they normally probably wouldn't want to do. What is political knowledge? Now, political knowledge are a description of political facts, explanations on how and why politics occurs as it does, and kind of feelings and prescriptions of what should happen in the political world. So, when we talk about political knowledge and descriptions, many bits of political knowledge offer a description which focuses on what questions and is usually based on one or more facts. So, the book says the neighbor states in Nigeria is 36. That's a fact. We have 100 senators in the United States. That's a fact. We have 435 members of the House of Representatives. That's a fact. Uh, the country with the highest GDP per capita is Qatar at 102,100. We'll talk a little bit about inequality uh, later on in the class and inequity. Um, but, you know, generally political knowledge has answers that you can't dispute. Explanations also attempt to specify what happens uh, why something happens is to provide the reasons of process by which the phenomena occurs. Why do people vote? Why don't people vote? Why do people get involved in protest groups? Why don't people get involved in pro protest groups and those type of things? Prescriptions of what should happen in the political world, value judgments that indicate what should occur and should be done. It's kind of, and we'll talk a little bit about ideologies in a later chapter, and that is also a good definition of an ideology where we try to indicate what should occur and what should be done. And to answer questions of what ought to be, not merely description or explanation of what is, and that's kind of the whole core of politics, where we analyze why things happen and how things should occur and why they occur in certain ways. We also talk about normative political knowledge, where your value judgment combines three types of understanding. Your description knowledge of certain facts, your explanatory, explanatory knowledge of what certain outcomes occur, and your priorities among competing values. Are you for lower taxation? Are you for free health care? When we talk about descriptive knowledge of certain facts, is basically what we've talked about in a little bit and trying to think about how things ought to be. So sources of political knowledge can be authority sources, uh, you know, whether it's your parents, your church, your environment. Uh, problems with authority as a source of knowledge can occur because sometimes you can get a convoluted view of the world just by looking at it through one lens. Rationality through our personal thought, our intuition, how we feel about things, how we perce perceive things that happen. We got to think rational with, with certain issues. Uh, our personal experience, whether it's being in the military or being law enforcement or being a teacher or being a student. And problems with personal thought as a source of knowledge can occur when sometimes our values or our belief system might convolute how you know, we view politics, whether it's good or bad. 
science, you know, we also have four essential characteristics of the scientific method that occur in politics and can, in a sense, kind of model our way of thinking. Uh, science is empirical in that it, it is concerned with phenomena that can be observed or at least measured. Science also entails the search for regularities in the relationship among phenomena. So, you know, we have the scientific method, and we'll talk a little bit about this. And the method of science and all of that is testable, where you can take a hypothesis, test it, run data, and come to a conclusion. Um, and your knowledge can be, base can be established. Now, when we... Uh, some sources of political knowledge also provide some advantages or authority and rationality as knowledge sources. When we have competing political claims, what can we, what can you do regarding one of these claims? We can ignore it. We can accept that it is correct. We can reject it, or we can try to reassess it. Kind of also what we do with the scientific method. Now, when we ta talk about political science, it's defined as a set of techniques concepts and approaches whose objective is to increase the clarity and accuracy of our understanding about the political world. While a lot of the other social sciences like history, maybe economics, which are related to political science and are in a sense cousins, uh, they can mostly rely on a set of facts, right? But when we talk about political science, political science looks at why things happen. How come people don't vote, like I said? How come people join protest groups? How come people will boycott certain establishments? Um, we try to understand why. And we kind of com come with, you know, something that can assist us in understanding the world of politics. Now, Kuhn, who is a political thinker and a political scientist, uh, talks about central concepts which identify and name crucial phenomena or things that are generated or things that occur due to our belief system. We also have theories that are specific, systematically related generalizations that provide explanations about certain things. You know, there's rational choice theory, there's realism, there's a bunch of different theories that we'll talk about through the course of this of this uh, month here. We also have rules of interpretation which indicates methods that will establish whether the explanations or predictions posed by a theory are right or wrong. That is kind of the same along the line sense of you know, running through things through the scientific method to try to prove your hypothesis right or wrong. Um, when you have a hypothesis and you're able to test that hypothesis in political science and your hypothesis is proven to be incorrect, that's really not a bad thing. Because what we're trying to seek in political science is truth. And even if your conclusions come up different than you expect, that's still an interesting finding. Do politics and science go together? Can we generalize things? Is politics important to study? Obviously, I'm biased, and I feel that it is an important thing to look at as far as studying phenomena and occurrences. Um, and there's different subfields of political science that analyze different parts of the political system, whether it's comparative politics or, you know, maybe comparing one country against another, comparing Pakistan against Mexico. Um, we have a subfield of American politics where we look at how politics runs in the United States, how the three branches of government interact with each other, the system of checks and balances, international relations or diplomacy. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll also talk a little bit about political theory and some of the philosophers that are out there and some of the philosophers that have made you know, assumptions about the political world and how you know, people like Locke, Hobbes, Rousseau, Machiavelli, how they've interpreted political issues throughout kind of the history of our world. So we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the, the development of political knowledge and the approach that political science takes to understanding, analyzing, and value data. We're going to talk about behavior. We're going to talk about systems. And we're going to talk about processes. Then we'll talk about relations between states, okay? So there'll be a video for each of these chapters, and uh, we'll continue with chapter two. Thank you.